My name is Romolo Delgado. I am the tenor for this production of Tosca. Of course, I am playing Mario Cavaradossi, the lead tenor. I don't, I don't necessarily think of the role isolated from the whole work, which is Tosca. Uh, Tosca being one of uh, Puccini's uh, more mature works uh, is, in my opinion, one of the masterpieces out there in the operatic repertoire. Uh, so I'm attracted to the entire work. Um, I find many times when I like a specific opera, I like just be, I like the entirety of it. So uh, I love Scarpia, I love Tosca, I love even the smaller parts. Uh, it's just really well thought out. It is a consciously competent, well written opera. I gotta say. So it, I, I can't say that you know one day I woke up and I said I want to be Mario Cavaradossi on stage. Uh, yes, beautiful music, very passionate. You have the the characteristic um, um, trademarks of Puccini. Uh, of course, these beautiful melodies, but also the intricate parlato sections of Puccini, which seem like very small little things, but there are, there's a lot of beauty and a lot, a lot of intricacies within these small parlato sections that all of Puccini's operas have. Um, so to answer your question, I liked Tosca, the opera, that it, it attracted me as a whole. Uh, I have done it a couple of times before. Of course, it requires um, for the tenor to be a little bit more mature with your vocal capabilities, right? Uh, you need to have the endurance, you have to have the beautiful legato, um, the, again, the parlato, which I was talking about before. Uh, and then that's, that's just from the singing perspective, of course, and then you were talking about uh, interpreting a character and uh, trying to create your own narrative that hopefully coincides or brings out the initial narrative that the composers had in mind, right? So it's, it's a challenge for me to get into this world, right? And become Mario Cavaradossi for this production. But I see Tosca as a whole. It, it attracts me as a whole masterpiece. Operas, especially I mean, Italian operas. Of course, there's Legato is this beautiful long lines where there seems to be no end or beginning to this beautiful melody. And in order to create this, of course, the singer has to have a very good solid technique of the instrument to create this beauty, to see to go from one uh, one line to the next with the text and make it seem like it's all part of the same story it's all part of the same melody it's kind of like poetry right if you take a look at poetry and if you just read the first sentence very emphatically or very uh, inspired and then the next three phrases are not then it doesn't fit like a whole piece right it is beautiful when every single line that you read um, it seems like it's part of the one that just took place before, and it's all one beautiful it feels like a flow. Line, like a flow, correct. The parlato. So you'll find that Puccini in many of the operas will have these small places during the any dialogue where um, yes, there's a melody, but it but it's it's more it's more like a spoken word, right? And it's hard to do these uh, these these little pieces because if you just sing it as it is, like La 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 la. It, it might be a little boring. So um, the words have to make a lot of sense, and you have to really try to understand why, in this very simple section, the composer wrote this interval or these notes or this space. Why is there a, this particular space between these two words? There was a lot of thought put into this, right? So you can't ignore these little things. The parlato sections seem like very simple uh, uh, sections, but they're not. You really have to pay attention of the details because there's somebody who thought that there should be, you know, one and a half beat um, space between these two words. Why? That's our responsibility. When I first saw it, uh, it was probably on television, and uh, of course I liked I liked the the opera as a whole. But I knew that back then, you know, my voice still was a younger tenor. Um, I needed to grow into that, right? Um, and also, it's it's a it's a more mature opera, so I think in order for you to bring out the characters alive, you also need to have life experience, right? You have to have experienced many things, so you can have that in your toolbox 
and then as an actor when you're coming now uh, to stage and then bringing trying to bring this character alive you have a lot of a lot of experience within you of different emotions different um, uh, challenges that you face um, that you can introduce them into the character how do I prepare for the character well it's a very complicated situation because of course first you we have to um, uh, understand that musically you have to uh, learn the role right the, the entire role um, I usually like to go out to the score and just try to go page by page bar by bar and try to figure out just the basic rhythm how uh, the melodies are going um, and I don't like to right away start listening to recordings of the great you know Tosca recordings out there because then you might be influenced with someone else's interpretation and maybe that's a gold standard interpretation that will never be touched but I think you need to do the work and by yourself with no preconceptions of how it should be done just trying to follow what is written um, which many times we sometimes overthink things and everything's there it's it's como escrito they say it's how it's written that's how you should do it for the most part um, so take take care of all the music part um, then um, I would have to do some background on, on the opera, just try to read where it came, the time period, just to understand the character a bit more. Assuming, of course, that the language is not an issue already, right? I'm assuming that your Italian is flawless, your French or your German is as, as, as best as it could be. So, I'm assuming that the language has been taken care of, uh, that the music learning part has been taken care of, 